This is the second straight caught report. We've had a lot of shorts drop by the bullion banks. Now, the managed money did add shorts in gold and in silver. Uh, in gold, they added 27,631 and they added 2614. These would be the financial houses. They're playing the fade in gold and silver. I think the joke is going to be on them and I think it's going to go long. And I think the bullion banks are the smart money. The other Welcome to Gold Silver Pros. Everybody, this is Rob Keynes of GoldSilverPros.com. This is your weekly market wrap-up for August 21st, 2023. Welcome, everybody, to the program. Today, we're going to be talking about how gold and silver are fading as the economic fundamentals crash and what that could mean for gold and silver going forward and what that could mean for the economy. Uh, first, I want to do what we normally do and take a look at the macro, and then we'll get into the gold and silver. I wish I had great news for the economy this week, but unfortunately I don't. The only one really positive sign is that the Philadelphia Manufacturing Index was up very nicely. It was the first positive print on the year. A quote from Market Watch on that statistic, quote, the Philadelphia Federal Reserve said Thursday its gauge of regional business activity rose to 12 in August from a negative 13.5 the prior month. Ending reading above zero indicates expanding activity. This is the first positive reading after 11 straight months of contraction. The measure on a six-month business outlook dropped 25 points in August to 3.9, the lowest level since May. So even though we had a positive print, uh, the business indicators aren't telling us or predicting that we'll have positive prints in the future. This may be a one-time anomaly. Again, this is the first time that's been positive in a year. Uh, while the numbers were up, economists still expect weaker production in the region about the next six months. And uh, at the same time, the New York State's factory gauge fell to a negative 19, the worst reading since May of this year. So overall business inventories across the U.S. were even on the month. So while we had a positive manufacturing print in Philadelphia, we had a very negative one in New York, and they're expecting Philadelphia to turn bearish again. So overall, not looking too hot on the production side of our economy. Industrial production was up 1% last month, though that is attributable to, attributable to peaking energy usage created to warmer than average weather in the summer, requiring more energy for cooling homes across the nation. So it wasn't necessarily production. It was energy based. We're hot. We're using more energy. Industrial production had to go up to account for that. It wasn't through native organic growth in the economy. On the plus side, retail sales were up. 1% for the last month, uh, which we'll take. We'll take that one. I wonder how much the game would be attributed back to school supply and clothing purchases across the U.S. As kids go back to school, we're buying supplies, we're buying clothes. We'll see if that 1% retail sales is attributable to that or to something else by looking at it next month. The most important number, the index of leading economic indicators, which economists use to gauge how the economy is doing, uh, fell 0.4%, which continued the trend of 16 straight months of negative prints. Overall, it doesn't appear the economy is anywhere close to recovering, which probably is not going to surprise most of you. On to the markets, the Dow Jones is down 36 points today. NASDAQ, however, snapped a four-day losing streak. Tech shares rise despite higher yields on bonds. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, NASDAQ is up 206 points, 1.5%. Not bad. S&P Splits the difference between the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ up 30 points, 0.69%. But the Russell 2K, the small caps are not doing so hot. A, a modest retraction of 3.41 points are down 0.18%. Overall, in the cryptocurrency world, Bitcoin is still suffering just a bit. It's trading at 26,000, slightly over 26,000 on the day. Um, the overall, the cryptocurrency complex not doing so hot. A bit of a sell-off Bitcoin right now, 26115 down $11 on the day. Ethereum down $4.75 to $16.72.52. Litecoin up a buck 87 to $66.84. XRP is back down to the 50 range, 0.52, down 0.02. I remember it getting up to 0.71 on news regarding the SEC. But that has fallen back down. XRP not doing great. And Doge, your favorite meme stock, now turned legitimate cryptocurrency is 0.06 unchanged there. The bond market is not doing quite so hot, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time in a while, the two-year is above 5%. That's right. The two-year is up 0.069 today to 5.005. So it rises above 5%. 
That's the first time since we've been recording these weekly market wraps that the benchmark two year is above 5%. Bonds are rising, which reflects increasing uncertainty about the economy. In fact, two year and everything shorter, including the one year, six month, three month, and one month are all above 5%. Being led by the six month at 5.508%, the 10 years at 4344 that is a yield curve of a version of about 0.7 between the two and the 10 year, which is indicating an oncoming recession. I wanted to show you guys a graphic from a local reporter here in the DFW area. She does, I just found her on Twitter. She does absolutely fantastic work with regard to what's going on in the economy. Her name is Amy Nixon. As you can see here, her at on Twitter or X is at Texas Runner DFW. She says here, millennials out here right now fighting for our lives with our tiny sliver of the pie and 156 trillion in U.S. assets by generation. Baby boomers own exactly 50% of all the wealth in the United States to the tune of 78.1 trillion. Gen X, my generation is next, 29.5% at 46 trillion. Even uh, the millennials come in fourth, bringing in the rear 8.5% at 13.3 trillion. And the silent generation, many of which are no longer alive, are still beating the millennials 11.9% at 1 billion six. I'm sorry, 18.6 trillion. So millennials haven't quite caught up to the rest of the, uh, the generations in terms of assets, but I think they're going to get there. Obviously, some will be willed. Uh, but also, as people retire, the millennials will earn more money and get better jobs. We'll talk about that on a future weekly market rep. I'll have more on that for you guys. Going over to gold, we're here at the CME Group's website. We're looking overall week volume dating back to about the end of July. So almost a month here, about three weeks of relatively weak trading on the markets. That would explain the price paid in gold and silver lately. Just not a lot going on. As we look at where traders are trading, again, the dominant contract month as expected in gold is December. You can see that as of Friday, we had 369,490 contracts open. Uh, we had 2,870 exchange for physicals. That is where you take one contract on the U.S. market and exchange it for access to the OTC unallocated market in the London. You might do that to get access to gold, silver, or to play price arbitrage or play the price differences between the two markets across the sea. Overall, we only had 103 deliveries because those have, have to happen in the current month, and there's not a lot of contracts in August, as you can see. So even though current deliveries aren't high, wait till we get to December. There's a lot of open interest. There will be some deliveries there, physical, on the markets. Trust you me, we're looking at Monday's data as of about 1.30. It's about two and a half hours ago. Uh, we see most of the trade occurred, again, on the December contract. Um, we had 129,387 so far today as of about 1.30. It's not over. Settling at about 1923, up $6.50. If we go to Friday's data, we can see that we closed up a buck 30 on the December contract in 1960. I'm sorry, 1916.50. And on Thursday's data, we closed down about 13 bucks. On Wednesday's data, we closed down six bucks. So a little bit of fade last week, but some positivity on Friday and today. So maybe that gold price is turning around. Looking at silver, we've had a lot more volume on silver. People are playing in the silver market. Of course, we have two months in play here, September, which was sort of a interim big contract month on the COMEX until you get December. But we've had 3,100 contracts fall off uh, uh, so far as of Friday, as you can see up here, uh, 2,347 of those rotated to December. In December, you have 77,385 open contracts. You had no EFPs there, but you did have some ESPs on the September contract. People going over to London to get access to either silver price or the physical silver. Only 20 deliveries for August. You guys have watched the program. You know how all of this works. And you know, probably put it on slow speed because we go really fast. We have a lot of data. Well, as of the 21st of August, 132, same as in gold, as of about 130 today, central time. Uh, here is the tail of the tape for silver. We're up about 60 cents overall on 61,000 contracts in September and up 59.9 cents on 15,535. Not a bad day for silver so far today. After you guys watch this, we'll have the final print on today, but so far today, it looks good on the markets. On Friday, we were up about 18 cents for both September and December contracts trading in silver. Thursday, up 18.4 cents. Wednesday, 
We were down 11 cents. So middle of last week, silver was bullish on the on the market. End of this week, it was bullish. Now going over to the CFTC COT report on my Twitter, I highlighted the August 15th COT report. That is the current one that came out Friday afternoon. Remember, the CFTC puts this out in arrears or behind the data as they collect the data from all the trading firms and put it into a big chart called the disaggregated commitment of traders chart. This is through August 15th, the current one. You can see here the bullion banks that continue to drop shorts in silver, meaning they are now net long by over 6,000 or just about 6,000 contracts. In gold, they dropped, dropped 22,000 shorts and they're now still net short a lot, but they're dropping their short position. And what does this mean when the bullion banks drop shorts? It likely means uh, covering some existing uh, short action and also setting up to go long in the fall. This is a second straight caught report. We've had a lot of shorts dropped by the bullion banks. Now, the managed money did add shorts in gold and in silver. Uh, in gold, they added 27,631 and they added 2614. These would be the financial houses. They're playing the fade in gold and silver. I think the joke is going to be on them and I think it's going to go long. And I think the bullion banks are the smart money. The other reportables, which are wealthy individuals and family offices, dropped longs and dropped some shorts, but added to their net short position in silver. And and but they went long 5,671 long contracts and dropped shorts about a net change of about 7,000 to the long side in gold. So the smart individuals and family offices are going long in gold and slightly short in silver over the last week. Looking at the gold chart again, we've had a fade down below. Uh, these two moving hours, just let's do the 50 and the 200 day. Those are the ones that I like to look at. And it looks like gold has fallen below the 200 day moving average. That's bearish for gold. But I think we could see a reversal up through here uh, if the economic news continues to affect traders on the market, which it will. We're going to move over to silver COMEX chart. It's soundly below its 200 day moving average, but you see a nice little bump here in silver. Let's make this just a little bit bigger for you guys. If we move over, there's been a nice little bump the last few days in silver. So silver, if you if we go back to settlements, when we go back to today's data and Friday's data, it has been moving up in the markets more than gold. You can see that on the chart. I'm showing the chart version of what we see here on the website. This is the table version, okay? And this is the chart version. Silver's moving up. That's a little bit of a positive sign. It means an industry wants more silver, but especially people looking for alternative investments want more silver. So if people are reading the tea leaves like I am on what's going on in the markets, they want silver. So let's summarize what's going on right now. China, which I didn't talk about too much, but which I've written about, is a little bit of a dumpster fire. Their loans and their trading activity is going down. The real estate market continues to come under fire. It looks like the debt situation is growing very dire in China. That's not good news. Over here across the pond in the U.S., uh, the millennials have a minor share of the four major uh, generations that we have now that have earning power or are retired from millennials to mine, the Gen X, to the baby boomers, to the silent generation, to the wartime generation, as I call them. The millennials are last place in terms of earnings. Baby boomers dominate, but the baby boomers are going to start ret retiring soon. And a lot of that income and wealth is going to start to flow down to them. So even though millennials don't have the lion's share of assets right now, they're the biggest generation across the world at 2.1 billion, and they're going to start building that. So they will soon become the power generation. That is going to be your weekly market wrap for August 21, 2023. I did want to share with you a nice piece of silver that Jan Bullion showed me that I can show on the program. This is a one ounce round Jan Bullion. If you're interested, go to jambullion.com and take a gander at their prices and at their stock, but this is an absolutely gorgeous silver round. I thought you guys want to take a look at. Love the design, sim simple and sweet. One ounce silver round, I'm sorry, bars. I keep calling this a round. It's a bar. One ounce silver bars are available. You can get it around or you can get a bar. You know what? The more I look at one ounce bars, the more I'm starting to favor those over some of the rounds. They're just gorgeous and you have all sorts of designs. You don't have to go for a five or 10 ounce. You can get a one ounce if that's all you can afford or if you just want to add some small bars to your lineup. Okay, that's going to do it, guys, for the Weekly Market Wrap. Until next time, this is your host, Rob Keats, goldsilverpros.com. Hey, thanks for watching. We selected these videos just for you. Check them out. And remember, $4.99 a month keeps the lights on and the channel going. So join our Gold Silver Pro supporter membership. We appreciate your support. 
Keep stacking.